Welcome everybody. Hope you're in the mood for romance because you're gonna get it whether you like it or not. So now that Mr. Dreamboat has stepped out of the Smoky Mountains smelling like Old Spice, he has some more words that he wants to get off his chest to his lovely maiden. Verse one, how beautiful you are, my darling, how beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats that have descended from Mount Gilead. Hey babe, you have goat hair. Okay, sorry, verse two. Your teeth are like a flock of newly shorn ewes, which have come up from their washing, all of which bear twins, and not one among them has lost her young. So at least she has all her teeth. That's very good. Verse three, your lips are like a scarlet thread and your mouth is lovely. Your temples are like a slice of, pom of a pomegranate behind your veil. So believe it or not, he's calling her cheeks temples. Verse four, your neck is like the Tower of David, built with rows of stones on which are hung a thousand shields, all the round shields of the mighty men. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle, which feed among the lilies. Easy now, lover boy. Verse six, until the cool of the day when the shadows flee away, I will go my way to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. You are altogether beautiful, my darling, and there is no blemish in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. May you come with me from Lebanon. Journey down from the summit of Amana, from the summit of Sanir and Hermon, from the dens of lions, from the mountains of leopards. You have made my heart beat faster, my sister, my bride. Okay, sister was a common ancient Near Eastern term of endearment by a husband for his wife. So he's not hitting on his biological sister. Those days were for Cain and Abel. Okay, carrying on in the middle of verse nine. You have made my heart beat faster with a single glance of your eyes, with a single strand of your necklace. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your oils than all kinds of spices. Your lips, my bride, drip honey. Honey and milk are under your tongue and the fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. You know, a milk and honey perfume wouldn't be that bad. Verse 12, a garden locked is my sister, my bride, a rock garden locked, a spring sealed up. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates with choice fruits, henna with nard plants. Nard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon with all the trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, along with all the finest spices. You are a garden spring, a well of fresh water, and streams flowing from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, wind of the south. Make my garden breathe out fragrance. Let its spices be wafted abroad. May my beloved come into his garden and eat its choice fruits. All right, let's just say he's getting fresh with her and leave it at that. Moving on to prayer. All righty then. <laughs> okay. In the spring of 1863, Foliot Pierpoint sat on a hilltop outside his native city of Bath, England, admiring the country view and the winding Avon River. Inspired by the view to think about God's gift in creation and in the church, Pierpoint wrote this text to today's hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Christ our Lord, to you we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. For the wonder of each hour of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. For yourself, best gift divine, to the world so freely given, agent of God's grand design. Peace on earth and joy in heaven. Christ our Lord, to you we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. If your faith is in Christ, having led to repentance and obedience in your life, let's bow our head in prayer. Jesus, we collectively gather together today in praise and adoration to you. You have given us confidence to enter the holy place by a new and living way. We stand in awe before your glory. We praise you for the infinite value of your sacrifice, the wonderful example of your humility, the tenderness of your grace toward us, 
and the blessed assurance we gain by your ongoing intercession for us before your throne. We are indebted to you for the remainder of eternity. I'd like to take a moment to pause and reflect upon your grace specifically. It encourages us not to grow weary in our trials, calms our fears, removes our guilt, frees us from shame, and strengthens our weaknesses. It teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope in your glorious calling and appearing. Thank you that this grace restores, leads, guards, supplies, and strengthens us. It also encourages us tremendously in our times of difficulty. Once we were poor and dead spiritually, now we are rich. Once bound, now we're free. Once defeated, now triumphant. Please be with us in the days and hours ahead. Pave the path ahead for us. Carry us through the obstacles and persecutions. Deliver us from temptation and walk alongside us until we enter your heavenly gates. In Jesus' name we trust, hope, rely upon, and pray to. Amen. Thank you guys. Appreciate you so much. Hope you have a wonderful one. Lord willing, you know where I'll be tomorrow. Hope you can join me as well. Keep on keeping on. Fight that fight. God bless you. Take care.